Welcome, it's uh, 6.15 here on uh, Tuesday evening. And first thing we're going to do, we're going to skip a few things and we're going to do the Superintendent's Aca uh, Academic Excellence Award. Excellent. All right, with us tonight, I have Gabe Jones Thompson. Or Thompson, why don't you come on up here, Gabe? I was able to, I'm going to end up sitting to read this so I don't sway. Um, but with Gabe tonight, I, his mother, um, Teresa Jones, and his father, Dwight Thompson, here. Um, so, let me just talk a little bit about Gabe. Go, yeah, sit. <laughs> I can make a stand and heal. That's how we do it at the, uh, the awards banquet in the, at up, at, uh, up at Tech. And you don't have to sit there while you get talked about it. All right. During Gabe's years here at Frontier Regional, he has maintained maximum honors and has a, a 4.6 GPA. Gabe has challenged himself by taking a rigorous course of study, including AP English, AP Computer Science, AP Chemistry, and at times he's had to create his own path. An example of this is his course of study of mathematics. Gabe first took Algebra One in middle school, and then he took Honors Geometry as a freshman at Frontier Regional. He then was able to skip Algebra Two and go straight into pre-cal at GCC over the summer to come back in the fall to take AP Calculus as a sophomore. The following summer, Gabe explored applications of math in, in a quantum physics course as part of a Harvard pre-college program. In Gabe's junior year, he took AP Statistics at Frontier while studying Calculus II on his own. The following summer, Gabe took Calculus II officially at UMass, which allowed him to take multiple variable calculus this fall. So as you can see, when we can't provide the course, he went out and found his own course. Just a real, a real showing of the kind of academic um, Gabe pursues. Outside the classroom, some of Gabe's many activities include playing guitar for the Rock and Red Hawks. He's also a member of the varsity basketball team that just won the league title. Um, I heard you had a great game last night. <laughs> coaches of the he coaches the Ultimate Frisbee Club, performs in the Drama Club Productions, tutors, and volunteers for the Junior Olympic and referees basketball <coughs> in the area of Luth programs. Karen Zayomik, Gabe's guidance counselor, and now we're talking about Gabe. Karen told me, Gabe has qualities that take him beyond beyond a good student and community member. He has a genuine kindness and caring that is framed by his humble demeanor not seen in many students. She went on to say that she checked that box. That box that you check on a college application that says, when the top stu few, when the top few students I've encountered in my career. And Karen Zielmick has been in our district for many, well over 20 years. Um, so when you check that box is a, is a significant statement about Gabe. So that is impressive. When I spoke to his AP English teacher, Melissa Stroking, she com commented on his level of learning and how Gabe approached learning. She said, even the task was not enjoyable, he would bring humor and energy in 110% effort. A glimpse into Gabe's personality, which is fun, creative, and humorous. We had a poetry slam at Frontier. We had one each year at Frontier. We also use Membean at Frontier. And Membean is a vocabulary skills software that students use in high school. And you can just imagine a vocabulary, you can imagine what that looks like and how that, so many students may not, it's not popular to all students. <laughs> Gabe decided to perform an approach slam in front of the entire school about Membean using the sophisticated vocabulary it pushes on students. And he brought down the house. A clever pushback to a task he didn't love, but by applying humor and energy, Gabe made it fun for all. I was thinking about Gabe and his great attributes as a Persian when I suddenly it hit me. Gabe is a young man of great character. You see all those people who are out there who are successful, the sports stars, the actors, the directors, the CEOs, and all you, all you think of those people could just use a little bit of character. Good character is an attribute that is difficult to teach, but in my eyes is appreciated the most. We are sad to see you leave Gabe Frontier Community as a student next year. And I've recently learned he's been accepted to Haverford College, Haverford. Haverford College in Pennsylvania. So, Gabe, I want to congratulate you for the super intense academic experience. And just what we try, what we do all our hard work to see you take advantage of. I've already gave him the words. So there's no. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Congrats. Thanks. Thank you. And congratulations to both of you. I want to go to your head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm single, and my father taught me how to do it. It's called it. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> if he was alive, I mean, he'd be safe. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
Take care. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, we're going to approve the minutes from uh, January 7th, please. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Uh, we're going to hold off on the financial statement for a little bit. Public comment? Uh, student Council. Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm from Student Council. And last Friday, we had a round table at the Blue Bonnet Diner where we met with other schools from Western Mass and we talked about how we can improve our Student Council. And we came back with many, many, many ideas about how we can make our Student Council uh, just more involved in the whole school and we really look forward to implementing those ideas. Super. Anything coming up that we should know about? Um, we are trying to do a fundraiser to help those affected in the Australia uh, wildfires and we're starting that up hopefully uh, mid-March. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, we're going to we're going to jump right into some unfinished business capital plan update. All right. <clears throat> we have multiple people on the committee. Does the committee want me to report? I'll let you get sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll All right. So if the, the uh, Capital Planning Committee has done, a, has done a quite a bit of work, um, and we're kind of, this is kind of exciting, and I really do mean it this way, because it's kind of like the first fruit of all the labor that we started about 18 months ago doing. Um, which should I start with? Let's start with the, the track. So last week we interviewed, um, obviously we got approved money, um, for approval for the loan for the money for the track, and so we've been looking for architects and designers. We interviewed three last week. Um, Activ Activitas, Malone and McBroom, and Berkshire Design Group. Um, and we've selected one to move forward. And while this committee has given the subcommittee the job to oversee the um, capital improvement um, and the projects, we never really officially took the vote to say that we should be doing that. The committee has the authority to do that. And so it'll be on the next committee's agenda because um, by the time I talk to the attorney and such about this, but he did recommend that tonight we vote, um, that we vote the uh, group that we chose, we, broke, we chose Berkshire Design Group to, to oversee the architecture of the track. What's that? You will not be disappointed. Oh, glad to hear that. Um, all, three, all three of them were, the, the three we interviewed were all strong. Yeah. Um, and we went back and forth on our final two it was good. It was a good conversation between the group that we had there, and uh, just the home, the home body being close, just made everybody. Once we talked about it, felt really good about I've choosing had them. Two interactions with them doing things for the water department in Waitley, and they are fast and they are efficient and they are thorough. And you will not be disappointed. And they did well in the format that we set up. Which, you know, we, we decided that we weren't going to do the presentation format. We didn't want them engineers to, to talk to us. Yeah. So we worked out so we, ahead of time detailed questions. And I thought they really did a good job of you know, getting the information that we needed. And it, it, the questions allowed the differences between them to, to rise. And we could talk about what we saw that was different and what we liked. I thought it was, it, it was a great process. Did they actually put a big price out that we were able to compare prices, or was it just really more on? So this is where it gets it gets difficult. Is so when we review the nine submittals to begin with, in order to figure out pricing, you got to look at percentages that they used in their last projects because we don't know what the actual cost of our project is. Um, we don't know because they're going to have to go out and do they're going to do bore testing to see what the what the what's happening underneath the surface. They're going to, you know, a lot of different kinds of things. And, and, and also what we're asking for in particular, um, they're going to have to come up with all that and then come up with a plan. And that's going to then drive the cost of the project and then they have a percentage of that. So, um, you know, they were well within where we thought the range for the past projects they've done is. Um, so all that's got to be worked out in contracts. And that's really the next step after, um, I've already been on, I had, I had a phone call conversation with them to let them know that it's not official yet, but they can start to, make room in their calendars because if this board votes it moving forward, um, you know, we'll officially start to put a contract together. And, and, and just to follow, so, so <coughs> they, they're, you, you, you go by like the percentage and previous things, but what they charge is based on an hourly rate schedule that they provide. Uh, so one of the advantages to them is that they're uh, 
their headquarters in Northampton, mm -hmm. whereas the other one which was, a, was a Connecticut outfit with a satellite office in Springfield, and the other one was uh, uh, Dedham. Yeah. Dedham. And so, so when you when you just think, you, you, and, and you're, you're you're paying them, you're paying post to post. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Right. So so that that was part of it, and also we had the committee had talked about um, using Andrea Woods from FERCOG to do a lot of the procurement stuff or a lot of the bidding management stuff. For going down the and uh, her hourly rate, that because it's the county government for us would be less than what the engineers would charge for similar work. So we want so that and they had extensive experience working with her, which is going to lower the cost of the project for us, um, and Good. everybody's happy. Yeah. So. Yes, sir. I think we're at the phase that we should, we should authorize the. Uh, subcommittee to proceed to the next phase and authorize the chairman to sign sign the contractor after contract after review reviewing set and do the negotiations that are necessary to do this. I'll second it. I'm gonna pass around this is a little bit about them so in case you're obviously in the um, but you can kinda of look through this you basically add, some there. You can add the name Berkshire design to it. The next phase, yeah, authorize the chairman to sign after the attorney reviews the contract. Sure, it's not making any mistakes. One of the, yeah. One of the gentlemen the other night actually lives in Sunderland. I'm not sure what his first name is. Carlos. Carlos. Um, very, very sharp. I mean, they were all sharp. You know, the ones from. Connecticut and Springfield, they came with a four-person show, and they put it on quite well and stuff, but we just felt, after talking, like I said, the second time around, we had a little talk and stuff, I really thought they were for our best interest and stuff, where they were going to say there's no way possibly that you would get it done this spring, it could be a, a fall project for the track, where the other ones were, oh no, we could, you know, we could get it done. And, because we're, we're right. probably about three, we're about three to four months late getting in the the paperwork and the bids and all that okay. stuff for, for to get it done this this spring summer type of thing. So yeah, so the as Bob was just saying, the the one thing we did learn is that it's going to be a tight window to get it done this this either summer or fall. Um, it still may be possible, and I talked to him on the phone earlier. You know, like I said. Um, Earlier this week, I talked to him on the phone about. They said, "What's the time frame you want to go with?" I said, "Well, let's kind of map up and see what the two look like." The problem is, there's only a, the number of contractors that do this type of work. I mean, they're loading up their their the bids are going out are out there right now. Um, through they said you want to have it done by March, you know, on bidding by March, because they're loading up their 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 late spring summer schedule, and then on top of the sub base work, there's only a few you know, fewer companies that actually lay down that. The, uh, <coughs> the topping, the, the rubber, the rubber surface. surface there, um, and so yeah, I get on their timeline as well. So, will we make it through this summer and fall? I don't know. It might be pushed one year, but we're going to be prepared. We're going to look at both and see what the best option is. So, how many do the course? Part part of what they're going to be looking at is to see whether it can be expanded a little bit or um, from what. What's it, eight lanes now, six lanes now, it's eight no, lanes. They're not, changing the, they're not changing the width of the track. They're looking at the, the they call them the D zones. Yeah, that's what they're Which is like, right now, to do the running high jump, you have to actually run on the track, and it causes wear in that particular portion of the track. So they're just gonna say, they give us some options about if we moved it, and then obviously pricing with those options. Um, just so the track, again, you're making the track last longer. Yeah. And then looking at the other running long jump and pole bolt yeah. as, as well. I mean, those, those are just, for those who don't know, been there, look at, they're just strips. But you know, making sure that you know, let's look at the whole project. We don't want to spend the money now, then four years down the road, say, well, we need another twenty-five thousand to fix this or do that on track. So, so they move the location of where because right now we don't. Know, that's that's to be move look, it out. Or they, that's what they're going to figure out. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I want to share with you the fact that I asked if uh, we look the committee look at the possibility of running a sewer line. What's that? Out to that area yeah, so that we yeah, can yeah, install yeah. restrooms right. and putting in it as an alternate so that uh, we try to take care of the people that you know 
out there because it was brought up at the board uh, three or four months ago about uh, being able to serve food and we don't have sewer out of that area. And sewer on Pleasant Street, so we have to get an easement through the town, which I don't think is a problem and to get it. And uh, Lenzik's house used to be down the end next to the railroad track. I assume there's a sewer connection there, but it might be uh, more than the road in front of the school. Yeah. So, well, you don't want to dig a block top either. But anyway, I asked to have to get an idea so that we at least look forward because this is going to be a 40 year high school. So no, it's a, we've been talking about that, getting facilities out there for a long time because Sandy Cannons is. Yeah. Sometimes Lost they're right, <laughs> you know. Um, so you know, and, <laughs> not very no, you know, and, and we can look at that as well. But it's again, it's not the idea of you know adding to the see what we can do within the right. scope of this project. And we just don't know how much how right. much the core the core samples and all all three of the people did talk about doing cores, <laughs> you know, drilling a hole right in the middle of the track in six to six to twelve different locations. And looking at the core and see what the ground looks like underneath the asphalt and stuff. So um, that was that will tell you an idea how much it's going to cost. You know, if it just removed the asphalt and your base is good, you know, maybe we could think about using the money for what Bob was talking about, possibly. Maybe you just put it in as an yeah. alternate. I mean, we, you got the money to do it. You know, we should think about it. We don't want to go through and dig it up later. Right. So Bob has a, a motion on the floor, and we have a, a seconded by Phil. You want to read that again, please? Uh, to authorize the sub to authorize the sub <laughs> authorize the subcommittee to authorize the chairman of the school committee to sign the contract with Berkshire Design Group after review by our attorney. I mean, it's going to take some negotiation, but you know, it's the next phase. But you're authorized to sign it once the committee buys into it. Yeah. Which will speed the process of getting it. That's the point. Okay. All in favor? So, anything? Are you still talking about it? Yeah, I'm still going to go and read this phase two, what we talked about. So, we've had two meetings. Last week, with the budget sub, I mean the uh, capital um, improvement subcommittee. The other one was to look at, you know, as we talked about um, the three phases. Um, one is obviously with the the loan. The X one is what are we going to use for E and D? We talked about a third, a third, a third, a third to put down the assessments, a third to hold, and a third to use toward um, backlog projects, um, building improvements. So what you have in front of you um, is what was recommended by the capital improvement subcommittee. Let's get away. No, she, 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 she let go of it and flew off the table. Um, spent a lot of work. And so basically um, what we're looking to do is not really spend a full third of the um, E&D but the ED funds is the list here for $115,676. But basically to go through two of the items I talked about earlier this year, we had emergency issues of having to replace the gym curtain. And then I, um, whether you call it an emergency or not, I thought the bleachers, there were seats that were broken and I would consider them dangerous if you were in a crowded gym. We'll go to sit down in a seat that doesn't exist. Um, but those we had to be repaired in the middle of the basketball season. Um, and then looking at the um, the lockers for the middle school, as you know, when uh, the central office moved in, we took over a wing, and we want to move those. We're not going to actually move those lockers because it's actually less expensive to buy new lockers and install them up here on the second floor where their classrooms are. Another bang because right now they're really tight. You have every kid going to every locker. You know, you've seen those thin lockers that are you know, not great, um, but it's, we want to, uh, another bank of those put up up here on this wing here so that's what that's for so that's really a program thing and a real need um as stated by george and scott um the batting cage in the gym has been long overdue to be replaced um it's actually kind of a 
hazard to hang up each year and it's got enough holes in it now it's not stopping any baseballs <laughs> or softballs um, the vinyl scare treads we actually that number was on there originally for in the uh, low 30s 32,000 they the material that we did the middle stairwell if you've been taking that up and down um, they have that material on sale because it's being whatever and they said if we buy that now we can get it at a discounted rate um, and that's with that install um, the gym floor for $35 thousand dollars gym floor is overdue to be refinished so it'll be refinished and repainted right now the um, <coughs> the number of changes in the different games from volleyball to basketball um, the lines going every which way need to, the floor needs to be re, uh, needs to be sanded down and coated so many times and starting to peel up and chip up in different areas and then needs to be repainted and be done kind of I don't want to say up to game code um, which put tape down for the majority of the <coughs> different sports and that kind of thing so getting that up the car there um, gym lockers this is the boys room right now the girls room is in better is in far better shape the boys room over the years about a third of the lockers are not operative another third of the lockers are this big you can probably put a swimsuit in there maybe a towel um, but we don't have a pool so I don't know why they, <laughs> I don't know why they have that there so I mean really you couldn't you couldn't put two sets of sneakers at least um, a growing child size sneakers in there so um, that's replacing the lockers in that room radios currently um, administration and different um, one-to-ones and different people throughout the building carry radios for emergencies during the school day they're not like the motor rolls you can buy for 30 bucks they're actually a couple hundred bucks a piece and this is to replace the whole fleet of them um, and get them up to I was looking over you George if you have to jump in but that was a kind of a priority for George because good communication um, is important so those right there, and you got a sub cold. We did a 10% contingency, just in case any one of those lines went over for any reason. Um, I would suspect most of those lines are going to come in under, because a lot of those were conservative estimates. Um, conservative on the sense of um, giving you larger numbers so that we can leave the world. Um, so basically, um, what I'm looking for this evening is a is approval there. So that I can, can alert the towns, you know the rules regarding E&D, that we're going to spend it. i got to let them know, and they'll have the select boards will have 30 days to take action. Um, since the select, there was a select board member from all four towns at this meeting, I don't assume it, that the whole reason we put this kind of process together, I assume it'll be pretty smooth. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to notify the boards of select four towns that we want to vote 115,676 Excess of efficiency account to be used this year. Second. Um, I have a question. On any of these, do we have to get three bids? Anything, um, anything over fifty thousand dollars requires three. It calls a sealed bid process. A sealed bid process. Um, everything else is going to be under. Um, if we use the. It's not a sealed bid process. There's another process for it. But do we have to get They're going to be, no, we're going to have to get quotes. quotes. We're going to have to get quotes from verified vendors. Okay. So. Unless we use a state contractor and then we don't have to get three quotes. Okay. We got a first and the second to notify the select boards from all towns about the ED that we want to use. Anybody have questions? Uh, by using ED, what kind of shape would it be us in after it's used? So you, you'll see tonight that right now we have a certified E&D of just over $500,000. Um, we're looking at using um, $200,000 to knock down the assessments, and that's what we used last year. Um, and then you're talking about another just over 100000 there. So leave us in the mid 200 and something thousand. It's, it's, it's basically where we were a few years ago. Um, our E&D was a little bit higher this year. We were very conservative last year, um, as we know through we had um, Concerns going through the budget season that you know we were very conservative on a lot of different areas, and also a lot of these projects we held off on, and so knowing that this was coming forward, so so we'll be in a healthy spot, um, and then it, I, I hope to have that we'll be replenishing some of the ND by um, having some savings from this year. Any other questions? All in favor? The third okay. column, the other process, that's why I said it was exciting. Yep. It's a, these are a lot of 
small little nagging projects that um, are just when we when we do them, it's just going to improve so much around this building. Um, the next one is these are three other projects in the building that the committee wants to bring forward to send to the town for town warrant. Um, there is no remember that the although we have um, the ability to take a loan, we are not taking the loan in this fiscal year coming up. So there's no there's no um, assessment to the loan that we're doing. I call it the big six projects, the track, um, the parking lot, the roof, and carpeting and that kind of stuff. Those aren't going to be started in the next fiscal year, so there's no assessment this coming year. So um, we're looking at um, doing three projects. These, and we, we put these on here because of the price range. We want to be under $50,000, and they're very simple to understand um, in the sense of the first one is the electronic door holds. We have many doors in this building that are not ADA compliant or fire compliant as the, the two conflict. We're using wood stops to hold open corridors so that handicapped um, students can get through them. Um, they should be all on electronic holds and why they weren't originally. I don't know what, the, what was, I don't know if those doors were put in afterwards or whatnot. Um, but basically they open and shut based on the fire alarm so that we stay within fire code but we are ADA compliant. So that's the wiring of that. The central clock system and the intercom system is basically going to probably fall under the same vendor, but our clocks are different in every room. <laughs> and if you're running a school, that's a problem. And so we've been kind of limping along with that. Our, also, our intercom system, there are certain areas of the building and outdoors where it no longer works. And that is obviously a safety hazard, um, and especially if you have to do things from alerting, notifying, and that kind of stuff to be able to communicate the entire building. So um, again, it's an age system. Um, but those are the those are the three items to go to. And if you flip your page over, the yeah, double side page, um, I, I has broken out. I basically did this. I stole language from previous article, um, took a stab at it. So, and then just basically those would be the assessment, the assessed cost, and the allocated cost each time. So not a lot, but just enough to keep us moving on that pile of things we need to get doing as well. We did put a contingency. These are four items. We did. Yeah. The, the central clock and the inter, intercom is that like when we did in Waitley similar system? It's a central clock. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, same yeah, idea. Paul did it, right? I mean, he yeah, set it up yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be the same system. That's why I'm not going to answer okay. that. But yes, absolutely, improving okay. the. Um, okay. They had the same problem. The clocks weren't working. We will go analog clock. I think, I think though, to, to go with your, what you what you asked um, our new facilities okay. director. Um, Billy Hildreth. He, he he was really. I thought he was really on top of this. Okay, this I just thing. want to make sure. <coughs> he, 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 he was quite confident of the numbers and and, um, and all that. So, if we're short, we're at the point. Move to propose item. Second it. Any other questions? All in favor? And I just, I'm closing on that. I just got to say that there's a lot of work of this committee, and it's good to see. There's a lot of, as I said, the bill, and it's exciting, but it's a lot of work coming down the line. A lot of these small projects that we push down the road, we're going to clean them up, and that's a good thing. So thank you. So, Bill, what do you have for us tonight? We have. <laughs> this iteration number one, or is this iteration number two? Two. 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 But anyway, do you have some handouts? Yeah. Thank you. Shelly has the uh, copies of the budget. And uh, if you were in the subcommittee meeting, you only need copies of the assessment page. Yeah. There's the assessment page, copies of the budget, and uh, there's an analysis that goes on top of it. We're, uh, I know this is kind of an odd thing to ask you guys to vote on the budget, but here it is. Can you vote on this? So we need. <laughs> We kind of, what we're looking to do as a subcommittee is adopt a tentative budget figure for tonight. So we, when we go to talk, we got to begin to speak to the Selectman and Finance Committee at the end of this month or the first week of March, one or the other. And it's, it's hard to, to give them something that you guys haven't at least had an opportunity to put a sort of a, at least a pencil signature. You know, so that's why we're calling it a tentative figure at, at this time. So we have something to take forward to them, plus the, the public hearing is scheduled, I believe, for March 4th. So we need the third. third. Okay. It's hard to have a public hearing on, uh, on a, something that you haven't voted on either. So in that particular, we're not trying to spring this on you, but if you look at it, you'll probably, you'll be okay, you, I, you'll be okay with it compared to other years. And Shelley will explain the ins and outs of it, but uh, you know, I, 
I think a little indulgence if you'll just uh, we'll go through this and she'll explain the whole thing to you and that and that's why we're asking you to vote a tentative figure tonight so we have something a little bit more solid to take up on the road show. It's all yours. Great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, so what I've given you is a full budget shows line by line every expense category within the budget and then there is a summary narrative page as well so I'm going to go through the summary kind of read through it stop me if you have questions I do talk a little bit fast but if you need something explained just interrupt and I'm happy to slow down or um, start over so we're looking at an increase of 2.84 percent for Frontier next year which equates to three hundred and twenty six thousand forty five dollars total local budget of one million seven hundred ninety two thousand four hundred and thirty seven so to build this we took into consideration expenditures over the last three years and looked at the actuals and adjusted any lines up or down as they needed to be um, and then also took input from principals and department heads in regards to operational and programmatic needs and wants um, we've also included wage increases for IAs and teachers based on their contracts, as well as any non-union personnel, meaning central office staff, um, custodians, secretaries, principals, um, any other administration. Uh, so the general fund um, is not the only funding source for Frontier. We also have revolving funds. So we're looking at a total, including our revolving funds, total operating budget of $12.5 million next year. Um, and those alternate funds, the revolving funds, are else also included in the complete budget workbook. I'm going to highlight here the changes to the general fund. Um, some of the comments that are on here don't impact only the local. So I'm giving you, for example, the overall increase in teacher salaries. It, that is looking to be at 135,000 or 2.99% increase for our teachers next year. Some of our teachers are funded from other funding sources, whether it's special education revolving, early childhood revolving. So that's not all a direct hit to the local budget. Um, but overall, just did want to make you aware of the increase. Same thing for instructional assistance. We're looking at a $26,000 increase overall, or 4.7%. Now those increases are higher than the contract amount because um, teachers and IAs are also stepping. So it's the cost of living in the contract plus a step if they're moving up a step. Um, so you're not getting that flat 2% that was the contract rate there. Uh, the next few lines are adjustments based on actuals from the prior three years. So our substitute line, we are increasing by 5,500 and then summer salaries by 5,000. That is because those lines have been overexpended in prior years. And then we added $3,000 to cover consultation services for special education needs. Um, instructional hardware and software, we increased these two lines by $16,800. This is so that the uh, IT department can begin an annual rotation and replacement of Chromebooks and smart boards, which are student devices and classroom devices. Um, so that will be something that's a recurring in the budget year to year versus uh, one-time expenditure. Uh, we have a new keyless entry system. You all know that we, that was funded through the grant this year, but we do expect that there's always some unforeseen maintenance to those types of new systems. So we added $1,500 to cover any unforeseen maintenance costs there. Um, maintenance of grounds, we increased slightly by $1,500 based on actuals from the prior three years. We increased custodial wages by $5,000 to account for summer and overtime. Again, that was also looking at the actual expenditures from prior three years. Our retirement assessment with the Franklin Regional Retirement System is up by $41,000 due to um, an increase in our assessment. We have an increase of $45,000 in employee separation costs, which covers the sick buybacks or retirements. Our non-employee insurance is in increased by $4,000. That includes insurance such as workers' comp, liability, et cetera, um, for potential inflation, inflation. Those premiums always go up year to year. There's also wage increases and adjustments included for the non-union personnel. And then just a reminder, um, if you remember a few months back, the subcommittee had a special meeting to discuss the FY20 budget because we found that there were quite a few expenditures not included. Um, properly, not pro funded properly for FY20. So we did have to absorb those back into the local budget. 
Um, some of those included uh, the clerical staff, the salaries were not in there properly for FY20. We were missing fees for our auditor, uh, our trash removal increased, and then um, building and testing. There were some other minor accounts as well, but we've accounted for all of those um, in a funding source for FY21. Any questions so far? On the increase, is that a line item, $45,000 to cover retirement? Um, it's just increasing the line item. The line item has always existed, but we are expecting that to grow next year. Yeah, Based that on the retirements that, that we know and, of. Will that go up and down every year? Yeah. It depends on who retires. Okay. Uh, so we do have a few additions to the local budget. Um, we did have the principal and the um, curriculum director request uh, English teacher and the addition of a BCBA, which is a board certified behavior analyst. Um, those are coming in at mid-level range on the teacher salary schedule. Um, George, I would let speak to those two positions if you do have more specific questions about the addition of those, because it is an addition of two full positions. Um, and then uh, we also had to move a teacher off of the SPED revolving account due to a change in the um, tuitions coming in for students into our, our special ed program. Um, we split fund it so that half of her salary is coming back to the local budget for next year and half of it will be funded from other sources so that it's not fully absorbed. So it's a, a add of two and a half teaching positions to the local budget next year. One of them already exists, the employee already works here, we're just changing her funding source, and two are brand new positions. Do you have any questions about that? Uh, and then I wanted to give you a short list of changes that allowed us to cover some of these increases. So we are reducing from 13 to 10 IAs next year based on the needs of our students in classrooms. Um, we're also moving one IA on to be funded from the SPED revolving account. So that was a reduction of $80,000 to the local budget. So that's helping offset the salary increases as well as the increases that I talked about above. Uh, we have a decrease in employee insurance by $4,000. There was a one-time insurance adjustment in FY20 that we had to pay out to our employees, certain employees that fell within that contract. Um, so that was a one-time expense that we were able to pull off the budget. And then our out-of-district placement, uh, we have students that will not be going out-of-district next year, whether they've aged out or um, you know, are no longer in our program, but that's a reduction of $50,000 to the budget based on student needs. And then what I gave you there just for a reference point at the bottom is so that you can see what the increases are by a percent. So if we're looking at one, two, three, or four percent increase to the budget, um, you can see what each percentage point costs additionally. I was looking at all the ones that we increased over here. And I always remember the ones where you have an increase and you would have a couple of decreases. And I'm saying, where are the decreases? And I finally see down the bottom this little list down here they're big okay. but we never were never able to have as many positive add-ons as I see this year I mean I think it's interesting the way the budget's been presented differently over the last three years you know with, with three different um, business managers and it's also a way of the way some different people approach looking at budgets because like we could also spell out each IA position at the value it is instead of combining it all together, you know, those kind of things. There's also like things for insurance where we're adding on one end, but we're taking away on the other. Another business manager could have just also chosen to say insurance line is it's a wash, you know what I mean? But um, Shelly's being very transparent about what's happening in each line item um, as more, you know, as the, there's another sheet that was the, the group looked at that kind of broke down every single change in every single line she's highlighting those changes here so some of it is a little bit of information overload because if we're saving on one insurance policy and we're paying another insurance is staggered but you know what I'm saying so there's some of that going on there too speaking for myself and not the rest of the committee uh, I found it find it quite remarkable that we had a whole bunch of holes from the mortar shells left behind by Charlie's predecessors that we had to fill and a couple of new initiatives on here and we're still at 2.8 percent and I, I think I, I am so glad to have 
budget business and business manager backing house. I can't tell you. I think you've added years to my life. Probably have to say last year. <laughs> last year was, was torture. <laughs> Sufficient money to maintain the building for the court. Because somebody will ask us that question. Meaning, can you elaborate on that a little bit? You know, the, the replace carpets, the, the shampoo, the paint, and all of that. We have all those things in there. Uh, I know we voted this other stuff, but what I'm saying is the routine stuff, do we have enough money and enough help to do it? Yeah, I, th I think the maintenance lines are healthy. I think that um, Bill, the new facilities director, is still getting grounded to oh try my. to figure all of that out. Um, but I, I've yet it, at Frontier to experience instances where he's coming to me saying, we're already out of money in this maintenance line and we need to move it, where that does happen at some of the smaller schools because their budgets are smaller. Um, so I do think we're in a good position. I, Bill was part of the budget process and yeah. looked line by line at the three-year comparison, just like George and Sarah and the rest of the department heads did. And he was able to provide input based on actuals, whether he felt like we needed to so go up or down. So, so you're, you're you know, I think for this year, with him being new and me being new, we're comfortable. That doesn't mean that next year he's not going to come back and say, you know what, we really actually do need 5,000 more. Or, you know, I think everybody's still trying to get a little bit more grounded. Really, I, and so I'm going to give a different, a little bit more of a historical approach, knowing that we've overspent the maintenance line year after year after year, and that's what you're kind of going at there. Yeah. So you know we have to prioritize based on that budget line, where or not you know if we're going to paint a wall, you know for three grand, you know what I mean, or we're going to you know those kind of things. So that maintenance line does need to grow over time. You know we're not we grow we grow just a little bit here. We talk about some of our services that helps with the cleaning and yeah. some of those kind of things in the building. Um, I think it's one of those things where we are going to have to work on maintenance in general and how we're approaching it because we're doing a backlog of things with E&D right now. Um, you know, if we, if we increase the, if we, you know, we'd have less E&D, we wouldn't be able to do the back, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, like what side of that scale are you giving it? Uh, but I don't want here two years from now, well, we had deferred maintenance and we didn't do it, you know, because we supposedly identified everything that needs to be done. I just want to make sure that you've got adequate funds to do it. I one think of, it's one of the differences is just that, that you have the department heads that have actually put the time in to look to, to look back and to see and, and then to sit here and say that they're comfortable with it. I mean, last year they gave us a budget and said, "Careful, this might spontaneously combust while you read it." Well, it did. And, and, and <laughs> but the point is, you know, we were budgeting fifty or sixty thousand dollars for maintenance of the building. We were spending seventy-five to a hundred every year. And what we were doing is we were spending a lot of money before June thirtieth. There was another account, <coughs> and it was never actually being reflected in the proper accounts. And that's one of the things that I'm working on is to get things in the right spot, and we're doing that this year as a start, and we'll continue to massage it with not just you know central office departments, but across the school. And I mean, I think that the feedback from George and the teachers that I've interacted with has been positive to some of the changes that the business office is trying to make as far as the accounting records. And you know, I feel good with this budget. And again, I think that Bill's still getting grounded, but we do have a really comprehensive capital list that you know has that well, deferred maintenance on it. So they don't want to get us in a trap. Where we and not properly budget for the maintenance items because going back and getting that big borrowing authorization again is not going to be taken with any great reception. So if you're happy with it, you will look at it. Do you have an assessment sheet? I do, yeah. Okay. Do, you, um, do you want to look at the school choice info while we're still kind yeah. of talking yeah, about this well. first? Okay. okay. Again, if you were in um, the meeting earlier, this did not change, so you don't need this. Choice didn't change. So this may look a little bit different. I don't know what you received last year, um, but it likely looks different than what you've seen in the past. So I'll just walk you through some of the highlighted points here. So you can see our balance forward from FY19 was almost, um, I'm sorry, it was 993000 and then uh, coming into FY20, 
the net of our choice and charter, so choice and charter coming in and choice and charter going out, the net of that is 300,000. So we came into FY20 with 1.3 million in our uh, school choice account. You can see our expenditures for FY20 total 445,000. That includes all of the budget deficits that we had for FY20 that that subcommittee talked about with Darius and I previously. Uh, so our anticipated balance going into FY21 is 857,000. Our charter um, receiving, our reimbursement is up, but our charter sending is also up for next year. Those numbers are included here with school choice. So we're looking at a net of 290,000, taking our balance and then um, that total revenue net, we're looking at 1.1 going into FY21 and our expenditures of FY21 of just under 300,000. So going into FY22, which I know is a lot to think about, um, we're looking at having a really healthy school choice balance of roughly 100, and, I mean 850,000. Then we can do some partial things with school choice money too. Right. So discretionary funds. No. Well, you have no discretion. No, yeah, well, I'm saying you know, this, this committee, in its infinite wisdom, can, can decide to, to fund something that they need to fund. With all, with all what's going on within the bones of this thing, to have the bottom number almost the same as the top number, yeah. that's good. It's a good spreadsheet. One more. So this is updated, so everyone should grab one of these. It is a little bit smaller print because I wanted to get it on one page for you. The top bit of information uh, demonstrates the general fund expenditures, the transportation expenditures, the Chapter 70 aid, the excess and deficiency credit that we're applying, the transportation reimbursement, which leaves an amount to be funded of 8.5 million. The state is saying that the towns must contribute 5.4 million. So we're left with a balance of 3 million uh, to, to be funded here. The enrollment numbers are there. And then you can go through uh, town by town. Conway is looking at a $33,000 increase over last year. Deerfield is looking at a $153,000 increase over last year. Sunderland is decreasing by 38,000 over last year, and Waitley is increasing by 53,000 over last year. The percentages uh, by, based on enrollment are up above as well. We have this uh, discussion every year about the victims of the formula. And Sunderland is a benefactor of the formula this year, and Waitley is the victim of the formula because they have one less student from Waitley, but their <laughs> assessment is up by 5% well, because the state says that Waitley shouldn't be spending X amount of dollars on their kids based on having this many students from Waitley in the system, so the formula generates this. Not a, not a blessed thing you can do about it. <laughs> somebody, get, somebody gets it every year, and it's, it's my turn. It's even more diabolical. Yeah, but we've been <laughs> we've been hit over the years many, 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 many. Oh, we, I mean, we all take last year. Last year. Last year was your turn. And, and, and the, the EQV that they that they determined that your Chapter 70 local contribution equalized valuation is what uh, EQV and, and is. And that's what yeah. You, you think you think your town has enjoyed a measure of success? Whatever you Yankee Candle opened up a new little manufacturing uh, research facility with new employees in in Waitley, or the solar farm comes online and. But what you don't realize is that every little municipal success that you have, every little thing that generates more revenue for that, that you end up, that ends up getting calculated against the town in the school assessment the next year. And then you end up having to pay more because your town enjoyed a tiny little bit of success. <laughs> so how much, how much money did we get in chapter 70 versus last year? Is it minuscule? That's all right. I do have it saved. Hey, Bob, what did you want to ask? I, I got a couple questions. I think the figure that we want to move is the 
eleven million seven ninety one two seventy one, which includes uh, so much for the general and so much for the transportation. Because uh, you vote sure, the total budget. budget, you don't vote the assessment. You vote the total budget. Right. Okay. That's not the total budget, though. What do you mean? The total budget, the school's total operating budget is. 12515440. But we're just looking at the local here because the local is the only is the only this thing is that hits the town. Okay. But I have one question before we get off of this is what is we got to think on the school choice monies. How about the spend revolving ones? Do we have do we know where we are on, on spend revolving? Is there any money there? Uh, there is some money there, yes, we, there will be a surplus. Um, it's sort of a moving target uh, as Karen tries to figure out tuition coming in versus expenses going out. Um, this spreadsheet does show you the expenditures. It does not have the revenue amount on it, but we really level funded the other funding sources from 20 to 21. Um, we got the aid from Medicaid. Right. Reimbursements for that are also included there. So. I, I don't see any problem with budget. I, I'll move the 11 million 791 to 71, unless you want to move the different way of it. Yeah, good question. The, um, so I thought last year the transportation budget went up, correct? The transportation. Transportation yeah. reimbursement is up for so FY20. How, I mean, it's good, but how did the transportation change go down for everybody? So the amount that the state is saying they're going to reimburse us went up. So the town's contribution for transportation is going down. So last year, 432,000 was the transportation number, and we only received reimbursement of 900 or 99,000. This year, they're saying your reimbursement is going to be $100,000 more. And so, out of the Student Opportunity Act that we heard so much noise about, we got very little from. That is the one area that they did push that when they originally did regionalization, they were going to they were going to uh, refund transportation at 100%, uh, or, oh. you know what I mean? And then it happened, went to 80%, and then it went all the way down to 50 something percent at one point. Um, they are now trying to get that number back up. So that is the one, that number is back up, and, and you know, we're benefiting being a regional school. Number again, for Yeah, to fully fund regional transportation costs all across the state is another 59 million. They refused to do that. The, uh, they did, however, put 1.1 billion into the rainy day fund. So, correct. It would have taken 59 million to fund all the transportation. <laughs> Couldn't do that, but they put 1.1 billion in the bank. So, I'm seeing here that on this summary that I gave you, because I made some changes in this today, and I changed this, which is a separate worksheet, um, that the total general fund is off by like a thousand. This narrative says 11,792,437,000, and this is 11,791,271,000. So it's like $1,000 that I need to reflect properly on this sheet. Uh, <coughs> which one, which one do you want to vote on? Um, we need to vote on the one that's on the narrative. That's the number you want to use. Because that's the accurate one. This 11 million sheet, So moved. Second. Temp, uh, what's the word? I'm, what's the word? I lost it. The budget. Not a final, not a final. Tentative Ten budget. Yeah, Ten I put a proposed. Yeah. Proposed tentative, whatever you want to call it, but even though the proposed tentative budget is both. <laughs> proposed tentative maybe budget. Um, Bob, to answer yep. your question earlier, so Frontier is getting seventeen thousand four hundred thirty dollars more. In 0.61 percent change. It's a little bit. It helps. It helps. It's not. It's, 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 it's a trillion dollar initiative. You know, Twenty year initiative. Truly, really this is what we get. It's made nice press, though. Does anybody else have any question about the tentative uh, budget? It takes two thirds, right? I don't think it's a problem, but we've got to make sure if it's not unanimous, you've got the votes the board. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? All in favor of the tentative budget? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> well, we were talking. I assume he's going to go for it. He moved it forward. Well, I 
I'm pretty sure that it used, to, be, it it used, used to say two thirds. I'm not, not sure exactly what the language is here today. I think we talked about this a year or so. We probably talk about it every year. You're the other one I'm supposed to remember. It's, to do it unanimous is much better. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. We just would, would like to congratulate the budget chefs. Yes. They, yes. The budget chefs. That's exactly what it is. Let's see if oh. it's so, okay. it's so painless this year. It's like, we do need to go back and do it. I'm just going to present another check for you on the final one. Okay. First, would you like to talk about our current finances? Yes, sure. Um, I do not have the warrants. I didn't carry them. There was too many other things to carry today, so they are downstairs. Um, Bob did go over them and ask questions of the staff if, if questions were needed. If anyone wants to see them, I'm happy to, to bring them forward after the meeting. Um, but there were 17 warrants for review, totaling uh, $1,627,133.13. Um, I did email out the general fund and school choice expense reports. Uh, if you look at those reports right now, you're going to see a lot of negatives because while I talk about we've moved the negative balances into school choice, I haven't actually done that change. I want to wait till we're closer to the end of the year and do it once and not have to do it again. Um, but I am still monitoring all of those accounts. Um, no other major changes or concerns to report at this time unless you have questions. Okay, hey, we're doing pretty good for time. Next is our fun time. We get to talk about policies. There's a lot of them. All right, so we read, we read this month and yeah, this is the first month. this is the first time reading. Um, there are how many policies on here? So you got uh, five, six policies, and one of them is just a procedure to a policy. Um, five of those policies are coming from um, MASC. So basically law changes and it's one of those things where we could get the policy subcommittee together to go through the law changes, but um, I went on a limb to say that was probably not the, um, what the policy subcommittee want to do with its time. Um, and then the last policy is a recommendation from um, the administration at Frontier. So I'll go through these real quickly and um, I don't, you can tell me to what detail do you want me to go through them? I mean, just do a general overview. Yeah, we just do a general yeah. overview. So the educational equity policy is basically making sure that um, you're providing an equal education to all students, and not just education, but all the offerings of your school, and that you're, you know, are charged to do that. Um, educational opportunities, very similar, um, will mean that every student will be given equal opportunity in school admission, admissions to courses, course contents, guidance, extracurricular activities, and athletic activities. Um, the next one is the homeless student. Of course, I put a mint in my mouth here. Uh, homeless students' enrollments and services. Again, making sure that if students are being, um, almost all three of these, the military children, the foster um, children in foster care, and homeless students, basically making sure that you're not the student's not being penalized for their home situation. Um, and a very a very easy way to kind of do that is within, I think we talked about this in the military one, there's just some new language in there, but if you were a military child um, and you moved from one base to another and you went to a new school and now all of a sudden you showed up and you're like, well, you're just gonna take another year and a half to graduate because you didn't take all these courses. This is basically saying you have to do in your best effort to get that child through there with their peers. Um, if the progress of that child's not there, the child's fault. And the same thing has to do with foster students um, and homeless students and about making the best effort to keep them, A, to keep them in their main school if they're being moved around to different um, housing, to keep them have that um, one constant in their life and that kind of stuff and not put on. So that's basically the, the, the language behind all that. So those are the ones coming from MASC. The last one is the uh, condom policy. Currently we do not have a condom policy on the books. And we are looking for a very straightforward one. Um, 
that basically says that the school will, be, will make condoms available to the students. A lot of the schools around us already have this policy. It's one of those things that um, I don't know, even as principal here, um, what's held us up there. Um, the condoms will be, we'll, we'll have an indoor internal procedure, it'll be indoor too, <laughs> an internal procedure um, for that availability that the administration can change without having to come back. Um, you know, for a policy change, but basically they're going to be available in the school, in the school nurse's office, along with other information um, regarding um, sexual, sexual reproduction and health topics that students may need. So, so can I ask a question about that? You may. Um, so, is condom use part of sex education, or is it a public health issue? Is sex education a public health issue? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if the goal is to promote condom use, is to have the maximum condom use possible, uh, um, on all other things being equal, uh, then should they not be more freely available than having to go through the process of dealing with an adult at all, number one, or dealing with a nurse, <laughs> I mean, should they not just be placed in baskets in the restroom? Should they not be placed in baskets uh, outside in the, at the front door as you're leaving? If the, if the goal is to promote their use, to prevent disease, prevent pregnancies, et cetera, then, pr then promote their use. You also have to promote quality control. Right. Yeah. Well, what, so what is it? You don't want somebody to have a basket outside well, Why not? We're not talking about a bowl of mints at the Waitley Inn when you're walking out the door. Because, because the kids will look. Because someone will vandalize them and people will think that they're getting a quality product when they're not and suddenly you're looking at a whole lot of... Or use them to vandalize. Right. So, uh, yeah, the, and that, like, I, I don't know whether, the, the, I mean, there's tons of data, there's tons of schools and I mean, I, I did a little bit of recent, like that was, that's always been sort of a, a we tend to like infantilize our the, the students who say that they're not like up for that sort of responsibility. But I think that the truth is that that doesn't really show up in the record. It's not a responsibility issue. What I'm talking about. It's a I don't want someone thinking that this hasn't been tampered with when it has. It's more the I don't trust kids enough to leave out a box of condoms and not have somebody put pins through them. Put a pin all in it and put it back in the, in the, the bowl. The but I mean, that could just as easily happen once they leave the nurse's office or once they leave the pharmacy. And if it, or someone whatever. goes to the nurse and gets a condom, they're probably not going to put a pin in it themselves. Could they? Of course, have they? Yes. But could you do 30 of them at once? If you're getting them one at a time from the nurse, probably not. They're kind of clever, though. Here's We're trying to do a good thing here. Well, no, I, I do want to the agenda. We have a parent opt-out part of the procedure, so the parents can call and say, I don't want this available with my child. And that's another good reason for going through the nurse. No. So, we don't. Okay. We don't. And so this was discussed by the um, health uh, the nurses and our health education teachers mm -hmm. and that it's uh, right now to have to go when you go in the nurse office you're not going to have to ask there's going to be an area where there's information regarding um, uh, sexual reproduction and different options around protection and condoms is one of those one of those things there so you're not actually asking the adult for that which we would say to kind of defeats the purpose of providing um, kind of, there is some oversight to it, so you have that kind of balance. Um, but the opt-out clause, you know, you can come in, someone have to check the list, are you on the list, um, that kind of thing. And so this, this policy does not include that. So there's two, range, there's two ranges. When I talk to schools that have that policy, um, it's not truly enforced, where they have a list, but they're not always sure if they're able to monitor the students who are taking it on that list. So now you're changing it from available to behind closed doors until you have to ask for it. And then, so that kind of is not what the direction of the staff here wanted to go. So. I'm only going to handle the privacy. Who's going to see who's taking it? Who took a half dozen? Who just took 
Well, yeah. you know, the privacy of the nurse's office, if you, the nurses obviously but are going, going to be. That would, they would, that would be in violation of their. Or is it going to be out there on the counter when they walk in? It's going to be in the, the there's a central area when you walk in, kind of a sitting room would be in that area there. So when they can get you to walk in, grab a couple of leave. Correct. So there's some oversight too, but it's not, depending on the busyness of the nurse's office, it's not the uh, Grand Central Station in there as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's so many states that, that you can't even, there's, what, 12 states in the country that you can't mention the word condom in the public school, that that's against the law. They, let alone, and, 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 they, and they teach sex education, they don't have sex, but, but they have individual teachers that cover the topics by, by, by teaching how to put a sock on a foot. And, um, are those, because, are those the states that Those are the former <laughs> Confederate states of America, uniformly. Um, <laughs> Does anybody else want to add anything to this? I think we do. Put them on the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, the public ask a question. Can I have a question? Sure. Is this specific to condoms or are there other forms of protection like dental dams that are included in this? That's a good question. There is specific to condoms. There'll be information on other birth control things, but this is right now the state gives us condoms for free. We yeah. currently put them on a shelf. Um, <laughs> so this is, again, there's no cost to the school district on that. So there's not other. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this if is the first thing. There's about, a part of it. Uh, right. <laughs> being safe. You know, there is that the, the, the concerns of disruption to the school environment and that kind of thing is, you know, is a concern in the sense of, you know, if they were found in the hallway or whatnot. And so, you know, that's where, that's why the policy is one thing and the procedure is another one. So if there comes a group that are not using them appropriately in the sense, bad way of putting that, but are, you know, not, you know, are, are not handling it with the, the care of the subject, you know, um, then we'll have, to change, we'll have to change how we do things. Well, once you adopt the policy, it's tough to change. If you say you're going to do it a certain way, you well, No, that's procedures. The policy is just is basically that we would, you're, pleasure. you're passing a policy that is allowing the administration to, not the administration, but the administration to develop a procedure to, to, to distribute so policy to the time handbook, so, right? <laughs> Also. Under the health care, yes. there'll, there'll probably be one line that says condoms are available in the nurses' office. Yep. <coughs> so it's either that, Bob, we put 50 set machines on every boys' room. Then we would rather have that. Why just a boys' room? <laughs> oh, just boys room. I would pave the floor with them. If they're easy and to, uh, to, to get, they're, they'll be used. The, the data shows they're used so much more often. If you, you put obstacles in obtaining them, so the data shows they're used far less. My, only, my only kind of one thing on that is that, is that I didn't provide a lot of additional information because I didn't know where the committee felt. If the committee wants more information, I can bring in members from our health department or nursing staff to talk about that further. Um, you know that kind of thing. So, or you can, or you can contact me outside the meeting, and I'll provide you whatever you need. Can you give us a list of the other schools that you contacted, maybe the, before we vote on it next next meeting? I mean, would you like to know what the other schools are doing? No, okay. I just assume, I'm just, I'm just okay. assume they're doing worse than us, like in everything else. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have fun at the budget? <laughs> <laughs> Congress doesn't have to spend as much money yeah. this year. We, we happy campers tonight. Yeah. Huh? We happy campers tonight. Waitley's gonna have to pull the pull the string this year. Yeah. What the hell did you put in these things? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a procedure policy you want to talk about too? The that was the last. Page. Oh, that was, that was on that. Okay. Just so that people had a general idea of how that would work, because it's. Gonna and be uh, next month. You guys will be voting on this, so. Okay. And then I'll be adding more MASC policies to be voted on next month. So there'll wow. be yeah. kind of five at a time until then. There's 30 of them, but some of them are just very, um, very minor changes. And so some of the minor ones I may not bring forward. Some of them are talk removing pronouns um, in policies and that kind of thing. So 
um, you may just change the pronouns in the policy and then, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, without having to do a revote of it. Okay, reports. Uh, the only thing I may have for you, I may not be at the next meeting. I'm having my right knee replaced. So, so in four weeks from now, I could maybe come, but we'll see how I feel. And if I can, I will. If not, <laughs> be out of here in half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything from the collaborative? Um, yeah, I've given um, email a bunch of handouts after the meeting, um, but they're lengthy, so I've got them if you want them. We had a lengthy presentation on the 2019 Youth Health Data and Regional Coalition Data. The survey that they do for like 8th and 10th and 12th graders and that sort of thing. And drug use. Um, yes. How about condom use? Do yeah. they have condom use? They probably do. Yeah. Um, so I've got a, a lengthy handout on that if you want information about the 2019 data. And again, they're encouraging people to use their website for professional development. They have curriculum available for vaping uh, prevention curricula, uh, curricula for vaping prevention and curricula for universal prevention, like violence prevention, alcohol, tobacco, vaping, other types of prevention, and that's it. So if you want any of that information, I can email that to you. Thanks. George, what do you have for us tonight, sir? So I've got, a, I've got two things. I emailed it to everybody. So uh, if you need a hard copy, let me know after the, after the meeting. Um, so our school was awarded a grant of $25,500 in partnership with a number of other schools in the area, uh, Amherst Pelham, Athol Royalston, Belchertown, Franklin Tech, Del Montague, Hampshire Regional, Mohawk, and Mahar. Uh, this is a social <coughs> studies grant. This, is, this will allow all of our 8 through 12 teachers, social studies teachers to register for the teaching civic engagement course that's being funded by this grant. Uh, each participant will also receive a $925 stipend and the text, We the Teachers, I'm sorry, We the Students and Teachers, Teaching Democracy in a Social Studies Classroom. Uh, goals of the course include developing and implementing a youth-led civic engagement project and fostering partnerships between district communities. So we're very happy, and thank you to Allison Walters and to Sarah um, uh, Mitchell for that. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, also, uh, we've recently opted into DESE's Seal of Biliteracy program. Uh, the state's Seal of Biliteracy is an award provided by state-approved districts that recognizes high school graduates who attain high functional and academic levels of proficiency in English and a second language. Uh, the state's seal of biliteracy takes the form of a seal that appears in the transcript or diploma of the graduating senior and is a statement of accomplishment for future employers and for college admissions. So we're, we, we just opted into that and we're hoping to get that rolling um, by the end of this year. So uh, those are the two, the two things that I'm reporting on. Um, just a reminder, winter break is coming up. Uh, sixth grade parent night is coming up on the 25th. And the eighth grade trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, it's going to be happening from February 24th through 20, the 28th. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for George? The 25,000 is our portion, correct? That's what's going to be split. That's going to allow for the teachers to get the stipend. No, but Frontier gets 25,000. No, it's collective. It's 25,500, and it's split between all of them. How many are we sending to it? So we have, we, are, we currently have four full-time social studies teachers. We have one long-term sub. I'm not sure if he's going to be a part of that. So we're so going to get 3,600 bucks, roughly. But we're going to get the to teachers. work schools as well. For the yeah, teachers. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, it, but it's also phrased that way because we're the host school. We're the one who led the grant. We have others, we have others to join yeah. on to, s to spread the wealth, so to speak, and also help us get the grant. But the truth is that we were awarded, and then we're inviting those other so they pay rent it wasn't like we just jumped out with other people, they jumped right. out with us. So, so we gotta, gotta get credit to the people who put their we, out the grant. Yeah. 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 Maybe we'll put a management fee. Management fee. Yeah, yeah. Very sure. good. I'll, 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 I'll ask for that, right? Yes. yes. That's the 500. Yeah, exactly. We'll get paid in condoms. That's great. One more. Darius, what do you have for us tonight? Nothing. Well, you didn't do that bad. Second. All in favor? 